I'm Mr. from Norway guys, my name is Arvind and welcome back to my channel. So guys, today's video will be about MBBS doctor's profession. We will be interviewing a practicing medical doctor who has been practicing in Norway for the past five years and she has done her MBBS from India. So I think this video will be relevant to a lot of guys who have the similar background and wish to know how they can come to Norway to be a doctor. So guys, please uh, hold your breaths <laughs> because we are going to interview Ajisa who is a medical doctor. So guys, finally today we have with us a practicing doctor in Norway, Ajisa. So welcome to our channel Ajisa. Thank you. So first of all, can you please introduce yourself to our viewers? Yeah, I am Ajisa Anup. I come from Kerala in India. I've been here for seven years and working in the medical sector for five years, past five years actually. I'm uh, specializing in the field of cancer and palliation. Okay. Working here in a city called Draman. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean cancer and palliation, how yeah. do you say it? I mean, <laughs> I can't even pronounce it. But I mean guys, this is for the first time I'm talking to a doctor in Norway without uh, I'm being uh, sick. So that's an honor for me. But okay, so jokes apart, first of all, let us ask her journey that how she transformed her MBBS uh, from being an MBBS doctor in, in India to a doctor, a full practicing doctor in Norway. So please tell us uh, that how did you do that? Yeah, sure. Um, I came actually as a, a family uh, on a family immigration visa to my husband who is working in Norway. Mm -hmm. So I came here in 2013. Yeah, 2013 years fly actually um, and I went through the full authorization process because Indian MPPs is not directly uh, authorized in Norway so you have to go through a uh, actually a long process where you submit your documents including your degree, uh, the transcript, your syllabus where the health directorate here in Norway actually evaluates it and uh, matches it with the credit points for MBBS program in Norway mm -hmm. and uh, I actually got a reply within six to eight months it took some time and they granted me a temporary license mm -hmm. where they asked me to do uh, a Norwegian we have to be really fluent in Norwegian language mm -hmm. where you go through courses and take a high level Norwegian language exam we have to pass it with good grades mm -hmm. and then uh, I had to do a course regarding the health system in Norway which is a few weeks, I think a six to seven weeks course, followed mm -hmm. by an exam. And then I was asked to do some extra service and experience in two departments, mm -hmm. neurology and psychiatry. That is because uh, the credit points didn't match equally to what they have here in Norway. So I okay. worked uh, like three extra three months in neurology and three months in psychiatry. Okay. And I had to uh, submit back with all the uh, exam results and the uh, experience certificate so okay. I was granted authorization when I completed the uh, okay. whole uh, requirements so one thing because uh, before this we were talking that for the first step right before you are granted this uh, learning or what you call this like six yeah license so even the guys who are in India they can apply for it even from India right yeah it yeah. is an online process so you can get all the details in there website which is called the helsedirektoratre.no mm -hmm. and you can just click in uh, to your profession see what are the requirements and submit it online okay so the link is provided uh, in the description please go and check it second thing is how much does it cost uh, so you when you learn Norwegian right mm -hmm. so you pass this Bergen's test yeah it's right? called so, the Bergen's test yeah. Yeah. so you had to I mean is it some sort of scholarship or you have to kind of fund your own studies? Um, I did it myself actually, like I funded it, um, uh, it was a private course, okay. but there are some uh, free, kind of free educa uh, Norwegian courses available okay. in the, the, it's a government which pro provides it, but it depends on the visa you are uh, coming and which year actually. Okay, okay. Uh, for family immigration visas, the spouse gets, uh, has right for some hours of uh, free oh, yeah. education. Yeah. Okay. And all of these submissions which you made, that would be in Norwegian, right? 
your exam for these two courses which you took extra yeah the, because the primary requirement is that you have to be able to handle both the uh, lang like norwegian written and spoken language well mm -hmm. to do actually get entry into this um, courses i mentioned mm -hmm. and these are the laws that is also the important to mention because i came in 2013 and the laws were uh, the same till 2017 mm -hmm. from january 2017 they have changed the law so they have added one more exam into the authorization process where mm -hmm. we have to take after all the three steps i mentioned you have to take something called the fag proven mm -hmm. which is a medical exam in norwegian mm -hmm. to finally get the authorization and from you get a temporary license, you get a period of three years to complete all this process. Okay. That's how it is now. Take the questions of few of the guys who have mentioned, right? Oh. And then the first question is from Yeshvakela and he said that uh, I wanted to ask that do I need to be fluent in Norwegian? And then yes, as she mentioned, that is the key. That you have to be very fluent in Norwegian. Right? And Please ask about part-time jobs that they did to sustain themselves. In did you do any part-time jobs? Yeah, just when I was waiting for the temporary license, I had done the first two steps of Norwegian language. I was not, there are three stages, so we have to reach the third stage and uh, do something called the Perkins test, which mm -hmm. is the, uh, a university level exam. So when I was in the uh, like the middle level, I uh, was waiting for the temporary license uh, as well. So worked as a nurse uh, mm -hmm. in the old age homes, which is a uh, as a big part of the health system here. Okay. So as to learn language and kind of a summer job. But uh, I mean, before I go ahead with these questions, how difficult is this entire process in according to you? I mean, what is more difficult? Is it learning Norwegian or the medical? exams uh, i think learning norwegian will be the first obstacle because the written language is kind of similar to the english alphabets mm -hmm. so it helps but the grammar is different the pronunciation is different and if you really want to talk to communicate well for the exam or as well it's it has a uh, an oral part so have okay. to talk friendly okay so the first i think the most difficult part was norwegian so once you cross that over the remaining uh, subject you are actually good at mm -hmm. uh, the only so it's just the matter of translation right? translation okay. in your brain so yeah. fundamentals are clear proud to be a BBS doctor <laughs> from India <laughs> next question is from Victor Aguchi and he says pathways and requirements for getting into the Norwegian medical system as an international medical graduate please also talk about residency training opportunities and availability of slots. I think first part you already mentioned, mm -hmm. but the second part, which I think he's answering it, are there any fixed number of doctors who can apply for this? We have this integrated uh, internship or house agency, as we call it in India, one year, which, is, which comes together with the course. Mm -hmm. But when you come to Norway and you get your authorization, the, that internship is not directly approved here. So you have to go through something called internship here in Norway, mm -hmm. uh, which is for one and a half years. It is kind of similar to what we have as house agency. Okay. But there we get to know really good the system at a, a hospital and in the uh, communal health at Hanson, that is mm -hmm. more of a primary health care which is a big part of health system in Norway so residency programs have fixed number of slots so you keep applying you can work in other uh, fields or other jobs mm -hmm. to, and you can take your residency when you get it okay. so you don't have to have uh, to like Residency to, wait for that. Yeah, nine. But the as the slots are uh, limited, you mm -hmm. have to wait for your ch ch okay. chance in a way. Okay. And then next question is from Mary Shuttle, and uh, he or she, I don't know. <laughs> Please, how long does it take to be a certified doctor in Norway after masters? How many examination does one have to take? It's the Period. same process. Okay. Uh, like uh, if you have a masters in India, you go through the same process to get it approved in a way, mm -hmm. and it is actually up to the health dir directorate. I unfortunately don't know anyone who got their masters directly authorized. They mm -hmm. actually. Uh, consider it more as a work experience mm -hmm. and you get uh, an authorization to work as maybe a postgraduate or a doctor who is specializing in that field. 
Okay. So it's the same time. Same uh, period. Okay. Same period. Masters doesn't count that much. I count. It, it's mostly counted as a work experience. Work experience. Vijay Bahadur uh, says complete process of getting license. I think it's the same. It's the same. But uh, a very good question. Entry level doctors, salaries and all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I have heard and that doctors make a lot of money. So mm. is it true or engineers make a lot of money? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing I can say is we earn definitely more than what uh, an average doctor earns in India. Definitely. Okay. On, uh, and when it comes to engineers, I have... Um, I, you know I your husband's have... salary, right? <laughs> So, I came as a fresh doctor actually. I didn't have any experience uh, from India. That is also good to mention because I came soon after my internship. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I started earning as a doctor, it was not, I, I can't say there's, it's very much uh, different from my husband mm -hmm. who actually is very much experienced. Like, yeah. uh, and we can uh, earn a lot, like uh, our basic salary is fixed, but mm -hmm. you can, doc the advantage for doctors is like we can, earn more with shifts we can work mm -hmm. evenings and nights or there are a lot of opportunities so yeah. once you are in the system yeah it's good to go it's good to, yeah because i have heard just heard that one million is a common figure what the doctors can earn so i don't know how true is that uh, it will take time yeah, it will take, take time, time. Yeah, yeah but yeah no it's problem. possible but it's possible so nihar lithai says sir please ask if one has bachelor level medical degree how's the whole procedure we already discussed it and if the same with BDS. BDS is almost the same. Yeah, process. BDS is the same. If yeah. you go into that website, you can see both for doctor, the uh, BDS doctors, also for nurses, nurses and physiotherapists okay. uh, and uh, maybe pharmacists. Okay, pharmacists. So all yeah. the different medical professions, they okay. have given it clearly. But the initial process is the same. Okay. Uh, they have to do this um, licensing and they get Norwegian, you have to take the Norwegian exam mm -hmm. and you get a you have to go through that health system course and test mm -hmm. and just the final exam step varies, varies from okay. uh, profession to so profession. health right? no, yeah. no, that is the website where you guys should go and then another question is music is love okay can you please ask i am in second year of university i want to shift to norway is it possible to join university there in third year such an exam uh, such a lateral entry is possible for uh, dental doctors mm -hmm. but uh, nothing that i know of for medicine doctors okay. because then it should be an mbbs degree from the european union countries or mm -hmm. from the scandinavian countries okay. so then you can apply for a Okay, lateral, uh, lateral entry. entry. But for BDS, even from India, they are allowed to come? Yeah, they have, uh, but they need language because the language course is in uh, okay. Norwegian. Mm. Okay. Kapura Boina, he says, uh, or she says, after 12th, what is the process of MBBS? Which exam to be written? How many years do you take? Where it is valid? Fee structure? Thanks in advance. Namaste from India. After 12th, is it possible? I don't think that it, it is like the system here is based on like our entrance exam in India. They mm -hmm. have something called the competence uh, exam, mm -hmm. uh, general competence exam after their 12th standard. Mm -hmm. And the grade decides your entry into the MBBS program. But then there also it is a Norwegian. Norwegian so yeah. uh, it is either for the Norwegian students here or from people from European Union who can uh, Norwegian, yeah, okay. like, take who knows Norwegian, Norwegian, Norwegian yeah. and take the exam. So, but it is dependent on your 12th grade in the Norwegian system as far as I know. Okay. So, yeah. So, I, but you haven't met in your entire career anyone no, from India, yeah, no, from, right? No, because I have uh, met people from other countries who have come here, but they had to repeat their 12th standard exam. Mm -hmm. But they were in an entirely different situation. They've come in Brazil, asylum seekers. Asylum yeah. seekers. So, okay. it's a complete different. And then Fatma Zahra asks Are there any universities providing MD? Also, which speciality? It would be better if she could provide the links of the university and information like fees and scholarship for Indians, Indians wanting to get admission for MD. Yeah, when it comes to the MD, it's not the typical like the Indian system. Mm -hmm. We have masters for doctors, like academic masters, like uh, masters in public health. Mm -hmm. administration or epidemics and all mm -hmm. which are purely academic subjects which we can apply based on our MBBS degree to universities mm -hmm. uh, it is both in uh, University of Oslo, Bergen, Trondheim 
may be different in other universities also. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is not nothing related to your clinical uh, work as a doctor. It is an academic master's and then you have to go through the same process of authorization to work as a clinical doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, but the PG program in uh, Norway, which I am doing, uh, is cancer and palliation, is a clinical experience based. So you apply for jobs in this particular department and work as a PG doctor and you go through uh, uh, specific requirements given in a logbook. Mm -hmm. what all you have to be uh, go through the procedures how many patients you should have seen and when you achieve the, that kind of experience you apply for a, a pg degree or masters mm -hmm. that's how you achieve your masters or md or ms in your clinical side okay so it's based on experience actually okay so those who are doing this academic right do they have a career opportunity after they have finished their studies for example a research field is open okay. uh, they have, can apply for phd pro research programs phd postdoc Post and that way but uh, still they don't come into the clinical okay uh, clinical space. Side. yeah and they don't get as much paid as you guys <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm not <laughs> one to comment on that so now i'll take the last question and uh, the question it's a list of questions from uh, poojan poojan and uh, most of his questions are actually already described but there are uh, two uh, questions which i like first is that how much does it cost for this entire process can you please tell it the different steps uh, like the amount may have a varied bit from what i have done before mm -hmm. but um, at least the the costliest part is the fat proven which is the final uh, medical exam which we take in norwegian it costs around 48000 okay. norwegian kroner 48000 norwegian kroner yeah, so okay it's, uh, that's expensive, expensive than a driving license yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> i spent 42000 for driving license <laughs> yeah so okay. norway is expensive yeah okay definitely. and besides this then you have to pay for your uh, the course re regarding health system and the test together it costs 13000 kroner for that okay and you have the norwegian language uh, it depends on your caliber how fast you learn whether you manage to learn something on your own and then skip some steps mm -hmm. otherwise uh, 90 hours one to complete one stage it costs around maybe 9000 to 10000 10, yeah. somewhere so you yeah. have three such three levels, such levels to so go 30000 and then bergen's test is 3000 33 mm -hmm. so 61 plus 33 so it's like almost 95000 Krona, yeah, yeah Krona is, but I mean for Norwegian language you can say right? Because yeah, that uh, definitely. You I, didn't spend that much amount of no, money. No, I uh, used like I learned it myself mostly, and I took took just uh, Bergen's test level courses online. Okay. So I uh, saved a lot there. He asks. He also asks, what is the scope and job opportunities for me there? I mean, let's not talk about him, but mm -hmm. in general, if you have your license so is it that you will get a job 100 percent no the the beginning is definitely tough but the key as i mentioned many times is norwegian you have to be fluent there is no shortcut mm -hmm. once you learn it doesn't it is not enough to show that you have passed the exam but mm -hmm. you have to be able to talk well interact properly with the people here because they don't come and talk to you in english for example mm -hmm. even if they can they they have they are very particular they talk in norwegian so once you show your uh, employer or when you are at an interview it's norwegian language they assess and always important to have some good references on the way for example my um, the part-time job i did as a nurse uh, actually was to make the cv look good with references so mm -hmm. i got norwegian references people who worked uh, who, who i Thank worked you. with okay and then language was the key once we um, managed to cross that line over and get your first job then things are better then mm -hmm. you are in the system you know um the laws the rules and the language it goes smoother but first job is definitely tough okay. it, it takes time okay and besides being a doctor she also has a youtube channel so let's advertise that so can you please tell about it what is yeah. it about yeah uh, it's just in the beginning stage it's something called uh, uh, the channel is called medsy lectures mm -hmm. medicine made easy okay. i just shortened it 
and uh, my aim is to provide uh, both MBBS students and stu medical students in all levels and PG students with academic material. So I'm just working on creating videos uh, which explains topics um, which is both useful for the exams and the clinical side when they practice okay so, and uh, so guys finally you know what to do please like this video share this video and subscribe to our channel and then finally it is namaste from, from norway, norway.